If bad footwork is holding you back on the wall, then this video is for you. I recently met with Stian and Martin, two incredibly knowledgeable climbing coaches from Norway, and Stian was kind enough to give me a masterclass in footwork. Today I'm joined by two guests. I'm joined by Martin and Stian, who are two climbers and coaches from Norway and co-authors of the Climbing Bible, which I have here in front of me, and the Climbing Bible Practical Exercises, which are two very comprehensive training books that detail practically everything you could possibly need to know about training for climbing and practical exercises to improve your climbing. You guys, I think it's fair to say, are fairly experienced in the world of climbing. How long have you been climbing for? Um, we've been climbing for 25 years. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually started climbing together in Norway oh, okay. when we were 14, around that. And sort of been climbing non-stop ever since. Mm -hmm. And you're both very accomplished climbers, that's correct. So I was reading your, your little bio and it says you've both been Nordic champion. Uh, he's been Nordic champion. I've only been a Norwegian champion. I've only been a Norwegian <laughs> champion. <Good boy>. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to add that the, the last... Norwegian Championship that we both entered, I beat him. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't remember. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not going to get involved. <laughs> it's been like this for a quarter of a century. So. Get, get, get. <laughs> so in this video, I'm going to be working with Stian on foot placements or footwork. We're going to be uh, looking specifically at how to place your feet, how to incorporate things like volumes and how to navigate volumes in your climbing, um, how to work on precision. Footwork for me is something that there's definitely room for improvement on, so I'm really excited to see what magic you can work with me. You've got, got a job on your hands. Well, I thought we could begin like, on, a, on a really base level and yeah. just talk about how to place your foot on a hole, mm -hmm. uh, like inside, outside, toe, and then sure. some tips on volumes. Mm -hmm. And then we'll try to integrate it into an actual boulder. Yeah. which is a lot about foot placement and we'll also get a bit into balance, I guess. Sure. Like first, when it comes to, to foot placements to start, it depends a bit on how you want to start because you're going leftwards. Yep. So that would mean that if you start in the most comfortable way, you would start like this and then you would have to foot swap, which isn't that, that easy. Mm -hmm. So, but we can start with that and then discuss like how to place your foot on yep. the start holds and then do the foot swap and then see if we can make the start easier in some ways okay. and then do this first traversing section and then do the top part see after. Okay, if you jump down, then we can see a bit what happened. And I think this is like, when you go to the gym, you just basically want to climb a boulder and then to actually stop and have the focus on, on what you're doing. Yeah. So now you had two foot swaps on the way yeah. out. Can you try to do that sequence with no foot swaps? Okay, so I'm trying to reverse engineer. <laughs> so I so think... So like the first, now, you, now you foot swap this one and this one. Yeah. Right. So if I start in reverse, mm. no. Nope. <laughs> yes. If I start in reverse, yep. would there be a way not to foot swap that one? Yeah, there is a way. Yes, very good. Like this, this is a side pull. Yeah. So you want to load it this way. Okay. And if you load it with your hips into the wall, then you need to place the outside of the foot, mm -hmm. right? So instead of standing like this, where sure. you're actually going, you're going to the left because you're placing your toe on the hold, you could stand outside edge. Okay. And get your hip in. And then, then you're quite comfortable in this position. Yeah as opposed to being in this position, right? Sure, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
and then then you could do like this and then like um. you said you can cross it through and then go forward sure but to to acknowledge that the way you place your foot if it's the outside the toe or the inside will determine where your hip is yeah and then that will de determine how you how you load the hold okay. right so see if there's a difference if you can stand outside edge it's interesting like doing um kind of like a workshop on footwork mm -hmm. my mind initially was just like well it's all going to be about my feet but actually we're thinking about like the direction of pull on the hold and how that influences mm -hmm. feet so it's like the whole whole body connection rather yes. than just placing my feet and forgetting completely about the handholds that i've got mm -hmm. available so i'm going so that's outside edge yeah, yeah. that's what good good and then it doesn't take much force to, to stand in that position. We're going over right. Okay. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's just a question of beta. So <laughs> we could do that, but it's it sort of changes at least this foot swap from being yeah. here. And this, this is quite a hard foot swap because the foot yeah. is, is, isn't that good. So this is an inside edge, like okay. where you stand inside, which gives you an advantage again with the hip so mm -hmm. that you come really, really close to the wall. Mm -hmm. And that's why you fall off if you want to stand outside edge on this. You'll be further yeah. away from the wall. Okay. So like on vertical and slabby, slabby terrain you would want to keep the inside of the hip as close to the wall as possible because then you can let go of your let go sure. of your hand right and then we can try to do as you did so we can do the foot swap yeah and you can show me how you did that initially because that was like textbook work good Okay, and jump down. Did you not? Did you notice what you did on the foot swap? So I think, I think that was a roll on, roll off. It was a roll on, roll off. Yeah, and I think I then specifically, I guess, because I knew you were watching, <laughs> was like, I'm going to place my left foot here, yep. but not so far that I twist myself off, so that I've got space to bring my right foot in and peel the left off. Very good. You should do that even though I'm not here. Right? <laughs> so. Yeah. And that's more of the tactical, mental side of, of things that you can actually see these things before you go on the wall and mm -hmm. make the plan because most people would just go on it and then place, place their foot on the best part of the hold. Yeah. And then stand up and then you're like, okay, I, I can't really fit in yeah. my foot anymore. And then it's a hard foot swap. you have to do the like tablecloth method. Yeah. So, but when you actually know that you're going to match this foothold, then you could stand toe on go in and then roll and go yeah mm -hmm. and to have that plan beforehand on mm -hmm. the footwork not only where to go with your hands mm -hmm. i think that's something a lot of people can benefit from do we have another option for foot swaps you did it differently on this on the first on your first go you swapped so feet I, in a different way i think that was more the like put my foot on top and then so whisk right, that jump one on, jump off. yeah you want to show it? I can try. So like this, more jumping foot matches could be a good option if, if it's not enough space on yeah. the hold to roll on, roll off. You would need to jump, mm -hmm. jump match like sure. you did now. Should we try the next part? Because now we've been on, on a bit of the outside and the inside of the foot. Mm -hmm. And the next two feet, they're quite... Nice. 
Good Anna. Good work. Thank you. So now you know you're being assessed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all my best so behavior. <laughs> so, like the first goal, like when you didn't do that move. Yeah. Do you remember where on the volume you stood with your right foot? So I think when I first tried it, I ended up, because this is kind of like the nicest, most scooped part of the hole with mm. the most rubber on it. I stood both my feet in here. Mm. And then I found the move up to the dual texture quite a big step yep. and I didn't quite get it, like enough over it so I ended up pushing myself out mm. whereas when I watched you do it you put your right step through your right foot onto here mm. which I thought was a good idea because that would give me a little more height yep. to be able to step up onto this holding up. I mean the distance distance from here to here I guess yeah. would be like 10 centimeters or something. So you would either gain 10 centimeters in reach mm -hmm. or you would give yourself a better uh, position to actually push off your left foot. Yeah. And I want to challenge you, now you went right hand. Yeah. And I want to challenge you to go with your left hand. Okay. So, yeah. if we could just jump this, right. So now we're here. And you went that way. Yeah. See if you can go left hand. I have a bit more reach than you do, so it's a bit unfair, but you would still stand up on this yeah. and then reach higher. Yes. It was easier, wasn't it? Yeah. With this one, with so much pressure on the toe, it would obviously be good with a stiff, stiff shoe because mm -hmm. you stand so hard on, on the toe. Yeah. And I think here you have a boulder, boulder problem that actually gives you the challenge of placing your feet precisely. Yeah. But the focus should be part of your climbing when you're training on, on every boulder, like yeah. to place your foot as silent as you did now. Yeah. So there's, there's one drill called the ninja feet where you can sort of have a competition with your friends. So they can sit with their back towards the wall and then just listen for you. And if you, if you do like this on the wall, then you get a dot. And, mm -hmm. it's, uh, and the competition is about getting the least okay. amount of dots. So on, on these precise feet where you have to place just the, the tip of your toe, mm -hmm. just be very precise on it. And here you place the whole body weight on just one toe. So you need to be precise on it. It's pretty obvious when it comes to the physical aspect of training that you place like the, the, the things with the highest amount of power and force mm -hmm. in the beginning of a session after okay. the warm up. But I think when it comes to learning and technique learning, you should also be arrested. So if you've been climbing for two hours and then you want to start your footwork drills, you're quite mentally fatigued. Sure. So I would think I would say to incorporate this into the warm up drills yeah. or even had it has it as a if you have it as a focus for that session so like this session right. is technical training more than physical training yeah and then if you do this boulder like 15 times and you reflect on it every time you do it and try mm -hmm. to place your feet differently then you would learn so much more than just do that boulder and move on to the next one yeah because we could play around for this for at least 20 more minutes and find yeah. different ways of standing and yeah definitely so I think I Sorry. I think there's something in my climbing in the last kind of like year or so, I guess as I've had like more in-person coaching, the, whole, the, the idea of climbing intentionally mm. and giving yourself that space to ask yourself like, why did I do what I did? Why did it work? Why didn't it work? It's mm. not something that I think a lot of climbers do in the gym, in a climbing session, especially if you're climbing for fun or it's like your social time. Mm. Um, the, the opportunity to reflect on your climbing and learn from it mm. is not always taken. So I think it's, that's why I find at the beginning of a session to warm up doing like footwork drills, yeah. kind of, for want of a better way of putting it, it's like quite a like meditative way to start your session. Mm. Um, yeah, getting I in the zone to climb. Yeah. And it's, like now there's a lot of resources, both online and in books and whatever, to, to like give you the tools yeah. and then you just have to incorporate it into training and I mean obviously when you come into a climbing gym you just want to start climbing because that's yeah. the fun part of it yeah so it's not always like to, to have the um, 
to be like deliberate and today I'm going to work on footwork drills isn't always that easy yeah. but, but like to <laughs> ideally you have a climbing partner mm -hmm. or a friend that, that sort of is into the same thing but sure. if not you just have to you have to do it for yourself and be, be a bit be disciplined, disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> true mm -hmm. okay so now we've discussed a bit about my placing outside inside toe and to be precise and silent as you move your feet mm -hmm. we talked about foot swaps and we could maybe um, have a look at how to stand on volumes yes yeah? that would be very helpful for me i would need to change shoes then <laughs> <laughs> like this is this is actually a boulder but we could Try to eliminate the orange one in the middle. Okay. So we just have to balance okay. up. Try it first and then we can reflect on it. Uh oh. <laughs> Okay, we're going to change. Good. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Concentrate so hard. <laughs> do, do you know where you stood on the volumes? Where are you told us? I would guess. Yeah. What, roughly? Yeah, roughly. What what makes you fall off now? Feeling like I can't lean in. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were to stand differently, it making you able the... to lean more in, where would you stand on the volume? Yes. Okay. Can you try? Yeah. I guess it's a kind of balancing act between as much rubber as you can get away with but yep. it is and it's and it's scarier to stand on the <laughs> <Yeah>. outside part Is that the right foot was too far? The right foot was too far right, right? Yeah. But now you stood further out. Did you feel any difference? Yeah, coming across this one definitely. Yeah. I'm still finding this, once the foot moves on to here, yeah. I think I find that tricky. Because it's, it's quite common like when you get volumes to stand by here because yeah. it feels safer, mm. right? But then you have, and you're so close to the wall that you're, you're just going to to drop backwards. So, so I feel, as, as, as you say, it's a trade-off because if I stand all the way out here, then there's not so much rubber on it. But to like find a place on the outside of the volume so you can, yeah. so you can be like here, right? Yeah. And then just move. Nice, yeah. So it's a bit scary, mm -hmm. but it makes sense though because you can lean more into the wall. Mm -hmm. So. It's like the general advice is to seek more out from the wall to place your foot mm -hmm. and also to drop your heel, right? Okay. And uh, you probably had that on, on different episodes as well, but like yeah. if you stand all the way on top here, then there's not so much rubber yeah. on the volume as if you drop your heel down. Mm -hmm. And then you can just move across quite easy. And then be right. Uh -huh. So you come over quite far left as well. I think what I'm yeah, you, doing you, you, you run away from your is right struggling foot. to. I'm like right, okay. I've placed my foot, and I don't want to move it because no. that feels insecure. So I'm going to keep it there. See if you can see if you can get into the wall and lean in, and then just do small footsteps on the volume. What? Good. So. Even further out on the volume. And drop your heel down. Good. Yeah. The heel makes a huge difference. It does, doesn't when it? You said. And you okay. can actually relax 
a bit more when you drop it. <laughs> <laughs> one, one could relax. One could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then this move is a bit longer for you, but just go and stick it. Yes. Good. That was way better, wasn't it? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, the heel, as soon as you said, drop the heel, mm -hmm. and I sunk into it, yeah. I was like, and then oh, just, oh, okay, yeah. It's even chilled. And then you will get a barn door going for that move. Yeah. Because of just the difference in reach. Mm -hmm. So just be prepped for it. The, yeah. So if you're prepped for it, then what do you think you have to do to Ooh. compensate for the barn door? Because you know it will come. So I think possibly. Hmm. Hmm. Is it getting your left foot as far left as you can to make the swing less intense? Yes. Is that because okay? then if your handhold is on the left side of, the, of your left foot, then you will bond over around it. Mm -hmm. But at least if it's, in the, is it, if it's in the same line or a bit to the left, then you won't have the barn door. Yeah. Sometimes that's not possible because of where the foot is. So here it's like you can't have your left foot in line with the left hand. So you will, the barn door will come anyway. Yeah. There are probably a couple of ways to avoid it. So when we move, if you want to jump it, you would probably need the foot swat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, OK. Because I have the reach to move control. Yeah. And you could obviously try that. I think you, you'll be able to like push slowly into it. So we mm -hmm. could try that one and we can try the foot swap. Okay. So you can decide what, what you want to try first. This is where we learn that we should have done a dynamic, <laughs> dynamic bordering <laughs> workshop. But that's just have all the tools in the box. <laughs> so you know. Good. Flash there! Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Never mind, I don't need the dino recording make sure. Thank nice. you. That was good. Oh. And then you have to do it like 10 more times so that it's like it, it really Get sinks. Get it drilled in. in. Yeah. But that was good ah. though. Yeah, I think so for the, I kind of thought about trying to get the left foot further mm. over and then um, Realised that to do that and to feel like I wasn't a bit too stretched out, yeah. I'd have to get the right foot in. Yeah. Would that be advisable? It didn't feel like I could bump the right foot in. No, then probably you would have to... Like now, now we shuffle feet, right? But then at least you would have to get your right foot all the way to, yeah. the, to the left. Yeah. And then just, you could probably just sneak over yeah. more and more and more and more and more. And I think at some point your right foot will go off here. Yeah. And if you can't reach it with the right foot on, then you would have to jump it like you did. Yeah. You can see how far you can push to the left, just going really slowly. Yeah. And then this is the sketchy part, because this okay. is where you feel that you're going to slide off. And then just do the weight, weight transfer over so that you can weight the foot and then yeah it was a english friend of mine who said that uh, a weighted foot never pops Whoa! <laughs> what do they say about a weighted foot <laughs> and then just lean over good lean 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 Yeah, very good. And then you can match feet. Good. Don't go for the bit with no wood on. <laughs> okay. But it worked though. Yeah. Yes. And then you have two betas, and then you could obviously choose which one is best. But yeah. it's like, you could always imagine like if the left hand was really bad, then you would have to do it slowly. Yeah. And if, if it's good, you can use more dynamics yeah. for it. And that's like where you can 
do all these drills on the same boulder. Um, you can add holds, take holds away, and just reflect on how, how to do it and all the different methods. Now, the only thing we did on a set boulder was to take one hold away. Yeah. And we could have easily added it back in, mm -hmm. and, and this move would be way, way easier. Yeah. But it's sort of like taking, what, taking in what you got to work with, and then work, work with those holds. Okay, so that brings to an end our Footwork 101 mm -hmm. with Stian. Thank you very much for taking the time to walk me through, literally walk me through <laughs> this slight problem here. I definitely learned a lot and it definitely highlighted some areas that, some bad habits perhaps that I, I have. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video to the Climbing Bible and the Practical Exercises version of the book so that you can click through and check that out. It's filled with some really informative, informative information <laughs> about uh, climbing, everything you could possibly need to know. So thank you very much for joining Thanks, me Anna. and I'll see you in my next video.